Boston Red here on the 19th of October 2014 as we move towards the fall elections in roughly two weeks. Our episode today is Judge Posner and the voter ID laws. We'll probably change our working uh, title. We'll perhaps change it a bit there, mess around with it there. But we'll first start off uh, with the story of the day or the story of the hour. We noticed over on Facebook many people had comments about the death of Thomas Eric uh, Duncan. Nonetheless, this is from the Dallas Morning News. Relatives of uh, fellow uh, Liberians uh, mourn the Ebola victim Thomas Eric Duncan at a North Carolina church. It's important to note that uh, Thomas Eric Duncan was the victim in this particular situation. He was not the villain as many of these uh, right-wing characters try to put it out. And this story bears it out. This is Salisbury, Dateline, Salisbury, North Carolina, a small church in the rolling hills of central North Carolina. A congregation grieved Saturday for the Liberian man who became the first person to die of Ebola in the United States. Many know Eric... uh, Thomas Eric Duncan uh, for carrying uh, the virus to U.S. soil, infecting at least two people and prompting widespread unease. But members of the uh, Rowan uh, International Church, a Southern Baptist congregation of mostly Liberian immigrants, remember the 42-year-old as a compassionate man with big dreams for his future. For them, Duncan's death uh, marks another milestone in months of sadness as they watch the gruesome uh, disease overtake several thousand people in their country. The outbreak has crippled uh, Liberia healthcare system and increased uh, the uh, deadliness of other uh, malaise. It's very difficult not only because of Eric's death but many people have other uh, relatives, friends, and family members who have also been dying in Liberia. That's the pastor there, uh, Gaudier, uh, said on Saturday's, uh, before Saturday's memorial service at the church. Mona's arrived in small groups, several dozen of them eventually falling into the church to about half capacity. The Duncan family members in attendance, including his mother and nephew, Josiah uh, Weeks, Mr. Weeks wrote uh, a letter, and it was published in the Dallas Morning News, you can refer to it, that has the family's account there. Duncan said he was tired, Weeks recall. So uh, so his mother said, well, uh, let me uh, let you go back to sleep so you can rest, and we'll uh, call you back in the afternoon. But after that, Duncan was too weak to speak uh, before his death on the 8th of October. He did not have time to say goodbye to his mother, his sister, or other close relatives because of the circumstances in which he found himself. The church secretary, uh, Vanny uh, Holmes, said, as Duncan's mother uh, bent forward uh, sobbing, sobbing, excuse me, Weeks uh, remembers growing up with Duncan in West Africa, although Duncan is Weeks' uh, uncle. They were nearly the uh, same age and were raised in the same household. Weeks recalled playing games as boys uh, with a tennis ball. We called him the tennis ball master, Weeks said. Eric uh, would beat everyone. Nobody uh, could catch up with him. Later, when Duncan had a motorcycle, Weeks rode behind him. He scared me uh, lots of times because uh, he rode so f- fast, Weeks said. A civil war tore apart, in Li- uh, tore apart Liberia. The family fled to the Ivory Coast. There, Duncan attended high school, founded uh, by uh, Arthur uh, Krusler, I suppose, a retired bishop of the United Methodist Church in Liberia. Krusler, who lives in Liberia, attended uh, Sunday service. Uh, he said Duncan ran a phone booth where refugees called their relatives in the U.S. and in Europe to seek uh, help. 
very important point there. Remittances is a very big part of income in many countries as Liberia. Some would uh, come there without a cent in their pocket. He would say, go ahead and call, and when you have the money, come back and you can pay me. While many of Duncan's relatives fled to the U.S., he remained in Africa. In 1996, he moved to Ghana, where he attended school to learn mechanics and welding. The family members said he returned to Moldova, uh, Liberia, in 2012, and found work with Federal Express. He was a Federal Express em- a worker. By some accounts, he helped carry a pregnant uh, Ebola victim days before he left Liberia for the U.S. Now, this is just hearsay, and a lot of people are wondering, well, how did he contact it? The fact, we don't really know. What we do know is that uh, he was a victim of mismanagement at the Texas Presbyterian Hospital that uh, they have admitted to, and as a matter of uh, law, an admission is guilt, and that part of the case is closed up. Now, there were four people in the house with him, a woman, uh, uh, a boyfriend or whatever, and two small uh, children. They have been quarantined, and they will come out of quarantine this week, or the 21 days. They, as far as we know, have not uh, became uh, sick with Ebola. Now, some people ask why, because obviously they were in the house. We don't know. So the only people that we know of at this time that have actually become ill is the nurse Nina and, of course, uh, Ms. Uh, Vincent, who became very ill and is now in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. So that's the part uh, we uh, know about. Harry uh, Chronicola, hopefully we didn't butcher his name too much, Uh, who said he is Duncan's half-brother, got a call from Duncan was coming. He said, uh, when I come, I'm going to work four or five jobs to earn uh, much money. That was uh, his dream, and and so that he died uh, helping someone. Chronicola uh, said referring to the pregnant woman that showed uh, the kindness of the man, Eric. For Liberians, Duncan's death is part of an unfolding tragedy for a nation that has been struggling to recover from decades of civil strife, and most people don't understand that they they've had a civil war within the uh, country. Their leader's name was Doe, which is a popular name in uh, Liberia. Uh, was uh, killed, and before that, he had taken over uh, from the uh, president that had been there for a very, very long time. Liberia was a colony uh, formed. Uh, to accommodate uh, Africans from America that were resettled there. Now, there were already uh, tribal people in Liberia. Uh, Towert was the fellow's name. Uh, we used to, he would come, I heard him speak uh, when I was very young. But I believe he, if I recall correctly, Doe, uh, being a military person, uh, killed him. And let's get to the uh, Dallas Presbyterian Hospital here. This is, again, from Texas. Uh, We didn't say it. They said it. So you can deal with them. Uh, There's a related article, What uh, Dallas Can Learn from Toronto. In 2002, they had the SARS uh, problem in Canada. Nonetheless, uh, even before the crisis, problems began to appear on the horizon for one of the area's proudest institutions. Hospital uh, campuses run uh, like uh, uh, a gearing a cruise uh, liner, a mammoth operation made up of thousand fine-tuned pots. But on the good ship, uh, Texas Health Presbyterian, the uh, paint, uh, the flaking of the paint, leaking pipes already began to show. In recent years, a 48-year-old hospital had uh, been uh, knocked for its emergency room. Now, people were talking about this, but this was a condition. One of the things about medical centers, there's a lot of record keeping. And as people go over the record, you're going to find a different story than what you hear from these anecdotal reports. Now, unfortunately, we at this mic uh, give reports as we get them, and some of them have been anecdotal. But we will come up with better facts as we move along. 
uh, the emergency room, a, a bowler appeared out of nowhere, a delayed uh, diagnosis, a patient's death, two infected nurses reflect a, uh, a cascade of uh, mishaps while Presbyterian as a hospital uh, charmingly is called uh, became a link to the gruesome uh, disease and global exposure of the worst kind. This has been the hospital on the siege ever since the night when a man from Liberia entered the emergency department there. One that as a few know is run by an outside contract. I didn't know that myself. So the ER is not run by the Presbyterian Hospital, so some of you folk on uh, on Facebook will now get this information by an outside uh, contractor. That explains why the patient was sent home. Cutting costs, a typical thing that you would see on an administration like the one ran in the state of Texas by their racist governor there, Texas Perry, and his rock. Texas Perry and his group of characters have outsourced everything. A new reality has altered uh, Presbyterian's course. TV crews circle like sharks. Sharks, excuse me. Parking attendants uh, monitor uh, underused uh, garage while inside staff members struggle uh, to uh, res- uh, to uh, 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 re uh, reconciliate their emotions. It's difficult to be proud to work here right now, said one physician, who, like uh, some other workers, agreed to speak only if not identified. I said reconcile. Okay. Anyway, staff members are doing their best, uh, as we can, on President. A difficult situation, no doubt about that. With uh, Presbyterian's two Ebola-infected nurses sent else, uh, elsewhere in the 24-7 tension of uh, caring for them has abated. But the scrutiny remains intense uh, over the hospital's treatment of Mr. Duncan, who died there, and whether mistakes potentially exposed dozens to more of the disease. By Friday, the Moody Investment Services, where the economic factor comes in, changed the long-term debt rating of the outpatient uh, Texas Health Resources uh, from positive to developing. Developing outlook reflects the uncertainty on the system's long-term financial uh, performance, Impact on uh, financial uh, resources, uh, litigation uh, risks as are coming. The firm reported following the recent crisis of Ebola at one of the system's flagship uh, facilities. As uh, for their work uh, place, weathering a storm of criticism, the Presbyterian crew of doctors and nurses have tried to maintain a show of calm and integrity. Meanwhile, the hospital uh, gearing a six uh, hundred thousand annual uh, revenue faces a deep loss of public trust. No doubt about that. Last week, CNN uh, a testy exchange took place between uh, the anchor Jake Tapper and the Dr. Haley, the former president of the Dallas County Medical Association, who says Pres- Presbyterian did a terrific job of caring for Mr. Duncan and protecting his workers. Not true, uh, Tapper uh, fouled back. He didn't do a great job, he said. A great job is when uh, you treat an Ebola patient and uh, and he survives. Not that you turn him away from the hospital, that subcontracted unit there, and he actually gets worse, then he comes back, then you treat him, then he dies. Apologies, they've already made it. Apologies, apologies show that there is guilt. Many experts say it's probable only uh, other U.S. hospitals might have uh, the same experience if Duncan had showed up with a Liberian background, fever, etc. But Presbyterian is where it happened, no doubt about it. The threat of Ebola has dominated the conversation in and beyond the medical center. At uh, one series of uh, staff forums uh, called by the administration there, on the issue, nurses spoke favorably of the hospital while castigating uh, the Federal S- Center for Disease Control Prevention there. Well, 
they need to castigate their uh, own administration. Many ICU nurses were angry and concerned. The cardiologist said they were asking for more specific training. People were frustrated, frustrated by the way they have been uh, Presbyterian has been presented to the media and.